Hi, Bruno. Hi. Nancy. Hi. Um, so I have a question uh, about a few of the organs, but the thalamus in particular, I wanted to ask uh, anything you would, any impressions you would like to share about the thalamus? Because when I worked on it, I was expecting to feel all that information transfer. And I kind of felt like I, it was much quieter than I was expecting and almost like I was in an elevator, but I didn't experience. Anyway, I just would like to know your impressions of the thalamus and anything you'd like to pass along. Great. So we wait until level two to go to the thalamus. There are many uh, areas there. They don't have a, a, an agreement on the terminology and how many areas are in the thalamus and what their name. So you're going to feel a little bit different names with different books in, in the thalamus. And it's a, an area that is very interesting because we call that the prime minister of the brain. It is going to receive information, select it, and decide what information is going to be presented to the brain, to the, the sixth layer cortex of the brain, so you are conscious of it. So it's a gateway to consciousness, an anti-chamber to consciousness. And so if you go there, you are in the place between consciousness and unconsciousness. And if you really try to feel how it feels to be to have information in the thalamus, it's, uh, it's information that are not organized, that are very funny, that doesn't make sense. So it look a little bit like if you had uh, hallucination and things are moving and blowing and shaping in different directions because they're not yet organized and getting labeled and telling you what is what. So you're like in a in a little bit of Lewis Carroll word, everything is funny and unusual. And so from there, then you organize, you know, consciousness and you go in different place of the brain. But what happened is you have so many parts of the thalamus and the way you describe this very really quiet place, you may have been in the most outside part of the thalamus, the reticular nucleus of the thalamus. You have this in Netter or different books the most outside little shield around the thalamus that is a place that uh, work with different things, but it's also a place when if there's too much information, it's a switch and you don't get overwhelmed by it. And if you get rid of those two little area outside, just covering outside the thalamus, if you get rid of destroy this area, you will enter coma. It's one in the in one of the three, four places when you can have a coma if you destroy that in the in the brain. So you maybe that is more calm uh, because other area will be usually a bit more active. But for example, you know, if the person has a closed eye and you go in the pulvinar, for example, that has more to do with visual information or, or things like this, maybe these parts were not active. So you were probably in the part that was not so active uh, right there. Salamis has uh, many functions, you know, and... They receive sensory information from every type of modalities, but there's one type of sensory information the thalamus doesn't receive. You know which one it is? Let's skip the thalamus. They receive sensory from you know all the senses except one sense. The olfactory. Yeah, usually they say the olfactory doesn't go through the thalamus, but there's also one thing that um, one um, researcher in New York called. Um, uh, Lienas with L L E uh, from Argentina thought is that the thalamus gather information from every part of the brain and try to unify it as one unified type of reality because you know the ear are going more on the side the visual information more in the occipital cortex everything is different part of the brain you need to unify that to see what you see right now a unified experience you don't see things dis disconnected. So you have a pretty unified experience. And Yenas thought that the thalamus send back and forth 20 times per second, so 20 hertz, 30 hertz, send information to the brain and gather everything to the center. And that's happened in a little, little uh, intralaminar, little nuclei inside the thalamus that gather constant information from the whole brain and unify it. And that's called thalamo- cortical oscillation. We need those oscillations to be really nice, really harmonious. If they're a little bit too chaotic, people sometimes get insomnia from it. And so it's a very constant 
back and forth between the thalamus and the rest of the brain oscillations that the thalamus uh, do. So there's a lot to the thalamus, a lot of uh, different parts, and um, it's very important. We also use it to bring consciousness when there's unconsciousness. So when you have a physical symptom, more and more I believe that the pain that is created by your symptoms are often emotional, spiritual pain that you don't want to feel and your body express, but it's just a, a phone call telling you to feel some of the pain you are feeling. So this acute pain is often an acute emotion, an acute problem that you don't want to feel. So the body is present, presenting that to you, but it's very unconscious. You have to understand while it's unconscious, what consciousness I'm supposed to, to understand here. And using the thalamus because it's going from unconscious to unconscious to conscious information, we can use that to bring some symptom, the meaning of some symptoms to consciousness. So we'll do that a little bit more in level two.